in order to be able to understand the destination of Socha Valley, I will just briefly give a short introduction uh, to what Slovenia's tourism is um, like, how it's marketing, marketed, positioned. Then I will go to the destination of Socha Valley and briefly present it. Then concentrate on value proposition in, in terms of what it has to offer, what it has to attract visitors with. Um, I chose a couple of inspiring stories from the Socha Valley and some uh, good practices, and then we'll try to sum up and share some key learnings uh, from Socha Valley that might be useful. So why did we choose, or why did I choose, why did we together with Terry and Mark choose Socha Valley as most relevant for your destination? West Glenos carry um, so-called cliff uh, coast. It has a very strong outdoors character, um, but with very strong and long tradition and history, fascinating history, also culture, but it's the outdoor that really comes across so uh, strongly. You will also see it in the visuals. Um, another reason is the destination is comprised of uh, several municipalities. When I'll be talking three plus one, meaning three municipalities so far, and one just joined. And they, they had been previously working on their own. And of course, they have their challenges and so great value in bringing forces together and joining um, under a common brand, Sota Valley. Um, and uh, another reason is that it wasn't a typical strong tourism destination from the start, as maybe some in Slovenia, like the coastal town of Portoroz, or maybe Blit, or uh, Ljubljana, or several others, maybe also Kranjska Gara. But this was a destination that emerged only some 10, 20, started emerging 20 years ago with uh, outdoor um, activities, especially um, water activities. But only some 10 years ago, when tourism providers started, well, local people were, when uh, residents started recognizing tourism as an opportunity and started opening up small private um, accommodation that the destination started to really become a real player. So let me briefly take you through Slovenia, a uh, country in the heart of Europe. Uh, and its position in the meeting point of um, the Alps, the Mediterranean, the Pannonian Plain, the Karst, it's the four distinct geographical words that meet in Slovenia. And it is the only European country with such a diverse um, regions, uh, two of them being very well established uh, tourist regions, as we know, Alps. Slovenia is one of eight countries in Europe that shares the Alpine uh, range, and of course the Mediterranean, despite the fact that we only have like 46 kilometers of the coast. And these um, geographical um, product um, areas or destination had been transferred into four tourist regions of Slovenia only recently. It was the new or the existing tourism strategy uh, from, 19, uh, from 2017. So three, yeah, nearly three years now. So Slovenia was divided into Alpine Slovenia, Mediterranean and, Co uh, and Car Slovenia, Thermal Pannonian Slovenia in the east, and in the central Slovenia, Ljubljana with the capital and central Slovenia. And if we try to um, transfer this into product uh, experiential way of thinking, that would be uh, having the Alps in the Alpine Slovenia, of course, with Lake Split and Bohin. And as you can see in the west, um, to, toward, uh, um, in the direction of Italy, it's Socha River. Uh, and then we have the cars and the coastal um, sun and beach type of holidays, but with very strong astronomy and wine regions. And then uh, in the east, we have very strong thermal spa, relax, uh, tourism offer and vineyards. Um, and to the southeast, it's more like roads less traveled, um, not so well established destination, but with destination like Kuchevsko, which is a really great destination with like 93% uh, covered with forests. So it's quite primeval. 
the vision of Slovenia. Slovenia, with the new strategy, wrote down the vision green boutique destination for five star experiences. And I can proudly claim that this is a vision and a statement that each and every tourism provider, each and every uh, direct and indirect stakeholder um, in tourism in Slovenia knows by heart, not only knows, but also believe it, believes in it. Slovenian Tourism Board has been really working um, actively in positioning Slovenia as green, and there are also developmental work and platforms behind that. Boutique and five-star experiences. Earlier, I just mentioned the words unique, um, because we put the five-star experiences in the vision, we soon found there is misunderstanding what five-star experiences think. But the idea behind it is that because of the diversity of nature in Slovenia, with the Mediterranean, the Alps, the Karst, the Pannonian Plain, um, it's, uh, we truly have a, a, a real diversity of experiences addressing discerning and travels. And that's why, in order to be able to better explain what this means, we developed um, a platform with criteria, Slovenia unique experiences. I will briefly later on present one from Socha Belly. So with this new strategy and with the four regions, Slovenia was divided also in terms of organization of Slovenian tourism. Um, 35 destinations were identified in the whole area of Slovenia, uh, 11 in Alpine and 8 in Mediterranean karst parts of Slovenia, 10 in Sermal Pannonian Slovenia and 6 in the central Slovenia. Uh, and in the Alpine Slovenia, you can see Socha Valley popping out. It's one of the leading destinations. This leading destination status meaning that it's given access to promotion and development money, but more, and even more importantly, uh, it uh, gives the system gives all these destinations a very direct access to Slovenian Tourist Board and its marketing activities. Uh, so this um, this system has been in use now for three years. Um, just one more thing I would like to mention when talking about Slovenia, it's the green philosophy of Slovenia. Slovenia has very strong green facts. I'm not going to go into them. But in order to be able to, let's say, um, talk about them and uh, talking about green Slovenia, Slovenia realize that a lot needs to be done in terms of sustainable development of tourism. So in two, uh, 2015, a green scheme of Slovenian tourism platform was developed. And all those little dots that you can see in the picture in the middle means that those destinational tourism providers are accredited or certified according to global sustainable tourism criteria uh, for destinations so-called uh, green destination standard, more than 60 destinations already, and also um, like more than 40 tourism providers with different eco signs. And only then, because we are green and we work in the green way, we can say, and we, we feel green and we promote it, uh, and we can use this uh, statement. Uh, let's get now um, to our destination of Socha Valley, a few facts about it. I'm going to also just briefly give some numbers just to get an idea about the size, the position, um, the marketing uh, concept, and then go to products. So it's positioned in Alpine, Alpine, Slovenia. It's in the region of Julian Alps. This is the region uh, where also a very well-known, iconic, and uh, very often more known than Slovenia itself. This is Blit Lake. So Blit Lake is in the same region, and it's also a partner um, in uh, working together in the region of U Julian Alps. Uh, Sota Valley is considered to be one of top outdoor destinations in Europe. I can, when I, uh, when I say that it was one of the first destinations that really started outdoor activities, um, the adrenaline activities um, in a very professional way, in a very competitive way, it, it, it was definitely the Socha, the Socha destination, the Socha Valley, with uh, um, rafting, with especially the new products that started emerging some 15 plus 20 years ago, like canyoning um, and, and others as well. So it's really a well-positioned um, and recognizable outdoor destination. 
Um, the destination of Sota Valley also has a very important um, asset. It borders on Trigla National Park. Uh, it's the only park, national park in Slovenia. So Sota Valley is in a way a gateway destination, or there are actually three gateway, gateways town of Bobets, Kobarit, and Tulmin. These are the three municipalities. Um, the Trigla National Park is um, somehow unique to Slovenians with its um, highest peak. It's not just a peak of 2,664 uh, meters, but it's really a symbol of all Slovenes. It's really special. So here is the destination. You can see Bobets, and then downwards as we go towards the coast, towards the Adriatic Sea, we get to Kubarit, we get to Tulmin, and this is the Socha that takes us down all the way to the to, to the Adriatic Sea. Um, and here we can see uh, with the, the green uh, lines, this is the Triglau National Park. And to the right, you can see the position of uh, previously mentioned Blit. And if you want to come from Ljubljana through Blit to Socha Valley, you get uh, usually take a very attractive mountain road. It's called Vršić Pass. It's the highest pass in Slovenia. Uh, famous for uh, bikers and uh, for touring, for motor motorcycle touring, for uh, for for a touring type of holidays with really beautiful views as you descend uh, to the Socha Valley. Uh, previously, I already mentioned the, the region of Julian Alps. Um, it's the region that has a very important status: UNESCO Men and Biosphere Biosphere Region. 10 municipalities working together. So the ones that we have in Socha Valley, and on the other part, we have Blit and, and Kranska Gora and, and Bokin and some smaller destination. Uh, they started working together already 30 years ago, and the initiative was started from uh, Bovets, from Socha Valley, because Bovets, um, which used to be the strongest part of Socha Valley, used to be a very well-known um, outdoor center, especially for the UK market. It was a typical lakes and mountains um, holiday with some of bigger hotels that were, um, that were, that had been closed. Uh, some of them still closed, a couple of them reopened like 10 years ago, but this used to be a typical tour operator's destination. But when the, the, um, the market was the, in, in the 90s, nine, 1990s, uh, with um, Slovenia becoming independent, collapsed, then the, some of the hotels closed, and the whole market of Bovitz was really struggled for a long time. The destinations in the Julian uh, Alps, together with Socha Valley, uh, they work closely together and really are building tourism in a sustainable way. Uh, they want to increase resilience, added value, uh, sustainable uh, grow in the sustainable way, and they see tourism as a generator of sustainable uh, change. And um, putting local community and livability in the very center of all that the destinations do is really in the uh, um, really strong in all their minds. Uh, I have been with them on a Skype session today for three hours all together. <laughs> so I'm all about Julian Alps today and Socha Valley as well. Just to give you an idea, it, it accounts for like a quarter of Slovenian overnights, for a quarter of Slovenian tourist bags. Um, it's, a, it's a region uh, with a very high international level. 83% of um, tourists come from abroad, the same in Socha Valley as well. Um, but it's a very small in terms of population, only 4.5% of Slovenian people living there, especially in Socha Valley. There are areas with hardly any population. There are villages with like five or maybe 10 people uh, living there, but are now being brought back to life through tourism and through very innovative cooperations um, and initiatives. Um, just some more numbers, but just not really, I will not go into details, but uh, to give you an idea, the whole, the three destinations of Socha Valley, Bovitz, Kuburit, and Tulmin, they have, um, last year, they had 850,000 overnight, and this is more than a double from 2010, where they only had 300,000. So it's doubled um, 
but even more so was the number of small tourism providers. 5,000 pets, 5,500 in 2008, but last year it was 12,500, so it more than doubled. Um, in this year, because the destination, even though it had so many foreign visitors, uh, Slovenes came back to Socha Valley. So Socha Valley in the eight months accounted only the loss of 28% uh, to, um, in, um, um, if we look at the year 2019. The vision of Socha Valley, how it's, uh, what it strives for, its ambition is to be the leading outdoor destination in the Alps, but not any uh, outdoor kind of destination, but a year round green and where you can still find your secret spot and where you can still relax and not feel overcrowded and overwhelmed. Uh, in the past, I think this is a very interesting aspect for you as well, in the past, there were some poor branding decisions in the in the region made, and I'm going to talk really uh, transparently and openly. Um, the Bovets, which used to be the stronger center, and Kubarit and Tulmin were only really small destinations with hardly any uh, tourism providers, or they were not really called like managed tourist destination. Bovet started to, um, to go on the path and was positioned as valleys of inspiration. You can see, I, I, I tried to find one of the old uh, brochures and nobody understood um, what are valleys of inspiration. But, uh, and then Tulmin and Kumbarid wanted to be really creative and they worked for 10 years as the country of live water. What you have in the brochure is in Slovene because they couldn't find an English one. And then the wider region um, from Bovet down to uh, the coast was also working as an emerald route, which had an idea of bringing the emerald color of the river Socha and positioning it um, as the emerald route. So what was missing? I started working with the destination. I. I Earlier, I tried to um, figure the right year uh, out, and I think it was like 15 years ago. And when I saw and I analyzed the um, values of inspiration and the country of life water, and I said to Janko, who is the manager of destination, he still is, but uh, unfortunately only for two more, for one more month, um, I said, Yanko, there is something missing. So why, where is your Socha? Where is the river Socha? Where is Socha Valley? And he said, okay, but, but he was only the manager of Kubarit and Tulmin at that time. And he said, but we cannot claim the brand Socha Valley because Bob, it's used to have it. And I said, yes, but they do not value it anymore. So why don't you have it? And why don't you develop a brand and write First, only Kobarit and Tulmin under the name Socha Valley, like here uh, above. And then later on, I'm sure Bowitz will follow, and then we will add Bowitz. And of course, then we will not we, we will have no need to say Bowitz and Kumbarit and Tulmin, but just position the destination as Socha Valley. So they did that and made, I think, a, a really beautiful um, visual identity. But what is really more important, and this is what it's all about, about it's um, today it has a great place branding and its place uh, brand is built from the inside, from the DNA. The DNA of the destination is the outstanding nature. It's the valley of Socha. It's the emerald color of Socha. It's the tradition of, um, of making cheese in the, uh, in the mountains. It's about... Um, really um, horrifying, strong, but because it was horrible and really um, bloody history, there was the, this is the area where the Isonso Front, the Socha Front, where some 300,000 soldiers, Italian and Austro-Hungarian soldiers were killed in the First World War, the Isonso um, Front, this was the highest front and most difficult front in, in any, uh, anywhere in Europe. So it, this is all its DNA uh, and this is an 
kind of basis and platform to develop experiences. Only then you can transform this into brand. And I think that this is well aligned uh, in Socha Valley and it's really important. And um, the DMO also developed really great visuals um, over the years. But above all, what is important, they have a very strong commitment to uh, sustainable uh, development. Uh, they became a Slovenian green destination goal to all three municipalities and they're working in a very committed way, in a sustainable way. Uh, the destination is marketed and managed um, by DMO, Destination Management Marketing Organization called Socha Valley Tourism. Um, it's public. Um, but it manages Tulmin Gorge. It's a natural attraction. It runs a booking center for two of um, biking trails. Um, it has um, the, the municipalities account bring together about a million of tourism tax and the budget of the DMO is 1.8 million. But six people in the DMO um, are paid through the money they uh, earn um, for running the booking center for Alpe Adria Trail uh, and, um, <clears throat> approximately. The challenges they have, because there are three municipalities plus one with the new one joining another municipality down Socha uh, River, there are three plus one mayors and of course uh, they're not always aligned and all decisions have to be taken through um, three plus one um, procedures and councils. They have a very strong vision a very strong transparent partnerships with tourism providers, but still have constant challenges with municipalities. Um, especially now when they are taking their roles from marketing to management and interlinking tourism with municipality development, they understand it's not only the tourism that needs to work um, in a sustainable way, but there is a very complex uh, and uh, challenging area of, of mobility, of waste management, infrastructure planning, agriculture, etc. And all these topics are so much interconnected today. And a DMO cannot ignore uh, the relevance of these topics and the importance of these topics and the need to collaborate in, in uh, working in a sustainable way. I think the destination is. Uh, more and more working um, in the way that it understands and manages the so-called hidden burdens of tourism because with such a huge growth of tourism the local infrastructure um, of course becomes too too short too small um, markets uh, shops run out of food um, ATM machines run out of money etc in summer and in those peaks so it's um, all this is kind of the hidden burden of tourism and a destination needs to decide whether it's going to go for quantity or for quality. Uh, and I think that the destination, the whole region of Julian Alps, together with uh, Socha Valley, they're really discussing and understanding the importance of the new KPIs. So not going for numbers, also not now going back to the uh, to the to the normality, but to new normality, targeting for quality, not for quantity, working on soft mobility, and last but not least, um, developing really uh, outdoor infrastructure. Um, let me just get uh, to quickly through the products, what it has to offer. So the market positioning of the destination is year-round alpine outdoor destination for active explorers. And as you will see, uh, this is their product matrix. Uh, so it's about water sports. These are the leading destination products, hiking, biking, winter and touring. And then um, it also very much well uh, is dependent uh, on uh, some niche products, especially fishing, fly fishing. Uh, is the strongest one, whereas mice um, is a very niche one there because of the bad connections. Um, you, you need like two hours to get from Ljubljana across Vršić Pass to Bovec, a little less through Italy, through Predel Pass. Air sports are also very, uh, very, very strong, like paragliding. It's one of the most well-known and most attractive um, paragliding destinations in Europe. Um, very important um, metrics, which shows that um, 
for example, biking um, is a very um, prospective, um, it's very on the rise, but it needs infrastructure and it needs uh, the, the problem of legislation uh, is there for mountain biking. So the destination works hard to address these challenges because now it's like the question mark whether you invest and you become a star or it's better just to forget about biking and concentrate on some other products. Then hiking is really a star in the destination. The hiking product is really on the increase and it has great offer in hiking. Also touring is an emerging um, product, a very interesting one because of the Socha. So it's a tour from Ljubljana around Julian Alps and then maybe down to the coast. Uh, water sports, um, this is like so-called cow. It brings a lot of money, it brings a lot of visit, but it needs investment into quality. There's also a problem with um, water regimes, a huge number of foreign uh, agencies trying to find their spot and so on. But the biggest problem is winter really. Um, it has the, uh, as we will see, it has the highest Slovene skiing ground. So let me just briefly run through, um, maybe I'll make some additional comments. Kayaking, it's for each and every serious kayaker in the world, Socha River is definitely in his wish list. Canyoning is also very strong. Um, but this water sports, the problem is because we have three municipalities and the water regimes um, for Socha River, Socha River is only one, but three municipalities and they have some different regimes. So there is really challenging to unify the water regimes in terms of um, who is managing it, how, when, um, um, investing into infrastructure improvements in terms of exiting and, and entrance and exit points uh, in the river. Biking, as already said, it's a great product. Uh, for example, the Transylvania mountain bike tour from Julian Neves, from Socha Valley to the coast. It's one of the most fascinating biking trails, one of very strong German uh, biking platforms. He said that this is, in his opinion, the most diverse biking tour in Europe because in such a short time you come from Alpine peaks um, to the coast. Uh, across the Slovenian um, region of Berda, which is like Italian Tuscany. Uh, hiking is great product. Um, I think it's, it's really good if I mention three of the products they have. Alpe Adria Trail, which is um, the trail that runs from the Alps, um, Grossglockner, Gross which is the highest peak in Austria, and then down through Slovenia and also through Italy to the coast. It's 750 kilometers all together, and it's um, it's a it's, it's a product that was developed together um, by all three countries, and uh, a lot of money was put was put into marketing, and it's really a great uh, product and brings a lot of visitors to the destination. It was chosen by as one of top seven trails in the world by National Geographic uh, travelers when it was started. Now, a new product was developed by the region, Julian Alps. It's called Juliana. It's a long list instant trail. By the, but the idea of the trail is that um, you go around the peak Triglau. So you don't climb Triglau, but you go around it. It's um, 270 kilometers, 16 stages. Uh, it was launched last autumn and it's been a huge success. Um, of course, with the pandemic, it was um, now mostly uh, Slovenians going on it, but they're um, now developing a Juliana bike trail. And another um, product really important, but not so well positioned and marketed, is the Walk of Peace. It's again, it's a trail, it's a walking, partly also biking, which connects the heritage of the First World War from the Alps to the Adriatic Sea. And it's also entered on the UNESCO's trial list of World Heritage. Um, paragliding is another, as already said, truly very strong. Uh, fly fishing, um, fishing, fly fishing uh, is a strong product. Um, and in Socha, you can find the biggest trout in the world, which measures over 120 centimeters. I can't believe it. So, canine, um, skiing is uh, also uh, an important product, but the problem with the skiing in, in, in canine 
which is like 2,500, it's very high, it's the highest skiing ground. Some five years ago, uh, there was some infrastructure damage. One of the skiing ropes um, broke down and they closed the winter skiing resort for like three years and the whole destination suffered hori horribly in, in winter because it did not have the leading product to bring uh, people uh, to the destination in, in winter. It's connected with Italy on the right, you see Sela Nevea in Italy, and on the left, it's Slovenia with Canin. Uh, but um, Canin would need like 60 million investments to make it really competitive. So now it's more or less just putting some small investment in order to be able to working, but it's not really um, <clears throat> working in its full potential. And then there are some niche products like zip lining, also golf and food golf. Another in, uh, interesting product that the Valley developed, um, and then I think I will come to uh, summing it up, is um, Socha was identified also for its uh, potential for festivals. And in the last sev seven to 10 years, two very strong festivals developed, Metal Days, it's one of the best metal um, metal festivals in the world. Like, but it's now developed like one week holiday, and in a small town of three thousand people, you have twelve thousand metalists, lovers of metal music, camping there. And when it was started, everybody thought, "Oh, this is just not going to work." But these people were so warmly welcomed, very cautiously first cautiously but then really warmly welcomed by um by people living there that for a week um this destination really uh lives with them um and it's a zero waste uh event it's having no plastic and and all, all the garbage is then really taken care of in the right way um but now with the COVID and uh, the event cancelled this year um, already a couple of years ago started uh, discussions whether this kind of um, uh, festivals are the right format for the valley. So they're going to, to continue this discussion. Uh, they're also working on local selection um, brands, which is like um, giving some criteria and tools and support and marketing for local producers. Um, we have had a look at the products already. If I just try to sum up the, the challenges of this destination, still very high seasonality and the problem of uh, winter because uh, Canin is not competitive enough. Um, the challenge of managing tourist flows and also regimes in Socha River. And then the need to increase quality in smaller accommodation providers and also infrastructure. But what destination really needs is at least a couple of full service hotels with at least 200, uh, 100 beds per one hotel. This is still not huge hotels, but in order to be able uh, to be competitive full year, all year round, this would really be needed. And another challenge is winter with Canin, which is considered to be an all year round center, an outdoor mountain. Uh, st still working on it. Um, and all, of course, all these uh, challenges that we have uh, had right now with the COVID and of course the new roles or DMOs. Um, I'm just going to Misha, uh, run Misha through. Have to just say yeah, one or two yeah. minutes, and that's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, in the destination, we have world's best female chef, um, Anna Roche. Um, her restaurant is one of top 50 restaurants in the world. Uh, and she's a real true ambassador of Socha River, such as, for example, director of the local Planica Dairy, which really has a very, very authentic, unique, traditional story. A good uh, practice is management of the Tilming Gorge by the uh, tourism uh, uh, Socha Valley. But what I would like to share and um, uh, finish with it's really all about destination. I think we all need to understand that, that individual towns of Koborit or Tulmin would not be so successful if they were not a, a, a destination that has a unifying and connecting theme topic. In this destination, this is the Socha River. We need top accommodation providers, green and boutique, who set the standards. Also need to be bold, but with a sense of place. This is one of the mountain huts in, in the valley. Um, we 
you need great visual digital content to inspire. And if you look through the board of Socha Valley, I think this definitely uh, is the case in this destination.